The topic of correction coming from God isn't well liked, but it's a necessary part of a Christian relationship with our Heavenly Father, and nothing better signifies his pure love for us than Jesus bearing the punishment for the sins of mankind as an ultimate display of love, one that isn't based upon unconditional approval and or feel-good emotions. The scripture de declares that herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. People prefer words such as correction or discipline over the stronger biblical terms like chastening or punishment. But even in these more unpleasant concepts, God is displaying his unmatched kindness toward us. It is kind because chastening from God means that we have a relationship with him as his children. It's kind because it means we won't have to answer to God in judgment for our behavior if it's been corrected now. It's kind because he's preparing us for what lies ahead in our lives, rather than letting it just come upon us suddenly before we're able to bear it. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are the called according to his purpose. In 1 John 3, we read about the great love God has bestowed upon us that we believers should be called his children. And this relationship with our Father is consistently referred to when it comes to receiving chastening from him. In Proverbs 3.12, it tells us, For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. Even all the way back in Deuteronomy 8.5, God reassures Israel that he only chastens them as a father will chasten his own child, an allusion to his love and his relationship with them. We honestly cannot separate the attributes of God's love and correction from one another. It would be like trying to do surgery on God. In Revelation 3.19, Jesus tells us, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. If being loved by Jesus means correction, then I want that. I need that. In applying this principle to my own life, I've come to think of chastening as pertaining to life disciplines, directions, and warnings, anything that might be physically unpleasant to experience, but it's for our spiritual application beyond fleshly discomfort. It's not always for punishment. When we're experiencing the difficulties that go along with correction, it is the best and most natural time to seek God much more deeply in prayer, which may also be the entire purpose behind it. He just wants you to spend more time with him. Remember that physical pain or illness can be entirely natural and not a specific chastening from God. The Lord will show you through prayer the reason behind what he's doing. At one point in my own life, I had gotten headaches for about 40 days straight. They were annoying but not unbearable. If I took aspirin, they would go away for a few hours, but then they would come back, and I could see no natural reason for the headaches, and so I considered that the Lord was trying to tell me something, and I sought him deeply in prayer. It was determined that I was supposed to leave my job. I prayed that if this were so, that the headaches would stop as a proof. The next day, no headache came, even though there were different stresses during that day, which could have been a reasonable cause to get one. But the strong base of our correcting scripture is found in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 to 11, and you should read it entirely on your own, as well as other supporting passages found in the description below. This passage, though, begins by reassuring us that God loves those he chastens and adds scourging to the description, which would be the brutal whip punishment that our Savior endured before his crucifixion. Thankfully, it's not meant as literal, but shows how rough it can get. We are further admonished to endure God's discipline and that when we do, it proves that we are his children. But if we reject it as coming from him, it likewise shows, likewise shows that we are not his. That's kind of dangerous. It also reminds me that we've had, uh, or rather the scripture also reminds us that we've had earthly fathers we gave reverence to. So isn't it better to give honor to our father in heaven and live? The correction that our earthly fathers gave was flawed and it mostly benefited them. But what God does is for our good so that we can share his holiness. In the end, chastening from God will grieve us while we are receiving it. But after it's done, we will receive the peaceable fruit of righteousness from being trained this way. One time a Christian friend shared with me a difficulty he was having, having and I asked if there was any chance that God was chastening him for some purpose. I didn't accuse him. He responded with, no, God wouldn't do that to me. I don't know if God was, was doing this to him or not, but the Bible says he will chasten us sometimes. 
my friend runs the risk of separating from God as his father by rejecting the notion of his chastening. May God help us not to fall into that kind of trap and to receive the kindness he actually intends for us. May God bless you.